This is homework 4 for Paul 242. In this presentation, I will be examining attitudes towards immigration using data from the ANES 2012 time series study. In a globalized world, borders are becoming less apparent. This is as true for consumer products as it is for human individuals. As immigration levels rise and foreign populations settle in new countries, understanding how and why individuals react to this phenomenon is increasingly important in shaping policy. For this reason, I will explore the relation between attitudes towards immigration and perception of the state of the economy, level of education, and patriotism. The dependent variable is attitudes towards immigration. For this variable, I have formed an index comprising of five questions relating to how the respondents viewed immigration. I removed the don't know refused and not asked no response categories from all questions as they were negligible and did not fit logically within any other category. I then recorded the remaining categories into a scale ranging from minus one to one. Next, the questions were combined into a summary index measuring attitudes towards immigration. Based on the recoding mentioned previously, the score of this new measure ranged from minus 5, when the respondent answered negatively to all five questions, to 5, where the respondent answered positively to all five questions. With an alpha of 0 0.6888, a standard alpha of 0 0.6988, an alpha of deleted scores between 6 point, what, 0 0.6 and 0. 6622. The questions are sufficiently related to be combined into an index. The measures of central tendency and dispersion of the raw index are as follows. The mean one is of minus 0 0.377 with a median of minus 1, indicating most respondents placed quite close to the mode of 0, while the range was of 10. The standard deviation was only 2.420, suggesting that most respondents placed somewhere in the middle between minus 3 and 2. Finally, the summary index was recorded into three categories, with the scores between minus 5 and minus 2 labeled as negative, those between minus 1 and 1 as neutral, and those between 2 and 5 as positive. The mean for this new index was slightly higher, minus 0 0.098. The mode and the median both had a value of 0. The range being 2, the standard deviation of 0 0.765 is, compared to that of the original summary index, proportionately higher. Previous research has suggested suggested economic conditions and labor market forces greatly influence attitudes towards immigration. Economic factors have traditionally been the go-to indicators in explaining attitudes towards immigration and have been widely discussed. The reason for this are many, but one common explanation is that individuals view immigrants as potential adversaries within the marketplace who are competing for the same jobs. Based on this idea, as economic conditions deteriorate and unemployment rises, attitudes towards immigration and immigrants are expected to become more negative. Of course, individuals are not always properly informed, and for this reason, their perception of the economy is not always reflective of its actual state. Even in prosperous economic conditions, attitudes towards immigration can be expected to be quite negative if negative perception, perceptions of the economy prevail. Here, I examine if, as expected, these attitudes become increasingly negative as individuals' perception of the state of the economy also become more negative. Next, it is important to consider non-economic factors in relation to attitudes towards immigration. Therefore, my second independent variable is level of education. High levels of education are thought to lead to more positive perceptions of immigration. Scholars have suggested that higher education is associated with higher racial and ethnic tolerance, and therefore more positive attitudes towards immigration. Finally, some scholars have also explored the possibility of patriotism being a strong indicator of attitudes towards immigration. As patriotism increases, I expect attitudes towards immigration to become more negative. According to this correlation matrix, perceived state of the economy seems to be most associated with perceptions towards immigration compared to the other variables. While education seems to be weakly related to both perceived state of the economy and attitudes towards immigration, patriotism is only weakly uh, related to attitudes towards immigration with an almost negligible correlation with the other independent variables. Once again, perceived state of the economy appears to be the best predictor of attitudes towards immigration with a beta of 0 0.362 compared to 0 0.118 and minus 0 0.111 for level of education and patriotism, respectively. While all three independent variables appear to have an effect on attitudes towards immigration, perceived state of the economy is overwhelmingly the best predictor of these same attitudes. Education level and patriotism, while not as strong, still contribute a small amount change in the DV. These results do not do have important consequences for this area of study. The perceived state of the economy seems to be by far the best variable to measure attitudes towards immigration. Interestingly, while my original study had used employment status, a personal microeconomic indicator to measure how individuals reacted to the economy, there seemed to be no correlation with attitudes towards immigration. It is very interesting that the country's perceived economic state seemed more important in measuring these attitudes than factual employment status. The fact that levels of education and patriotism do not influence attitudes towards immigration 
to the same extent, also has real-world consequences in matters of policy. Some of my results also seem to contradict some general assumptions that have been quite prevalent in the literature for some time. With regards to immigration policy, these findings have serious implications.